we clicked immediately and he just was so trusting. It's almost like he knew that I wanted to help him and be there for him. I just, from that moment, I was trying to think, how am I gonna make this work? I could tell he was very tired and come to find out how sick he was, it made a lot of sense. In my mind, I thought, okay, he probably just needs some vaccines and some paperwork and I'll still be able to make it onto my flight later on today. Fingers crossed, we get home on Monday. The last thing that I would ever and could ever do would be like, oh, well, this is too hard. Let me put him back on the street. We're here trying to get me to a bath. I'm using his medicated soap. He was starting to get a lot better, but I was also trying to figure out, okay, like how am I gonna get back? So I ended up finding out that I couldn't fly with him internationally. So my second option was to figure out how I can get closer to the border of the United States and then just bring him over physically that way. So we're here at the park at the airport. Here's his kennel. He's not the biggest fan of it, but it's got his little squish melon and a blanket in there. Bye, Camilo. Bye, Poppy. Oh my gosh. Pobrecito. We just landed in Juarez. He did amazing. Puppy, Camilo. Um, I just need to wait for my friend to get here. Sí. Sí. So we're in New Mexico now. Hi Camilo. Welcome to your new country. This is my friend's truck and his trailer. We're about to hop back into the truck and head to Kansas. This is Camilo entering the house. Vamos. Come here. Look. Look. Welcome to America. His personality has definitely just blossomed. He went from not knowing how to play with a toy to now having his own bucket of toys and he has his favorites and he he knows how to be playful and he knows how to just be a dog. I think that's the biggest thing that I wanted for him was just to learn how to be a dog. Hey, 